Hello everybody and welcome to Spindle TV. My name is Lanny Shaughnessy and I'm going to be your class instructor tonight. I hope everybody's doing well and uh, had a good week. Sorry about last week's class. Uh, we had, I was out in the field and there was no way of making it back in time for class so I had to postpone things. I don't know why I have hair sticking up somewhere but um, uh, just in case any of you are part of the spindle training videos group and things like that, I had a problem with my Facebook account um, this past week and I didn't know about it. I didn't know until just literally a couple of days ago. Someone had uh, gotten into my account and posted a bunch of crazy stuff uh, on my profile and everything. And of course the stuff they posted was against Facebook's terms. Uh, so I'm on restriction. I've got limited access to my account. I'm on restriction for 30 days, uh, even though it wasn't me. And uh, but Facebook's hard to communicate with. Um, so when you see posts on the Spindle Training Videos page, uh, the posts are going to come from Laney Shaughnessy, not Spindle Training Videos like normal, because for some reason uh, that page is not in my managed page list anymore. I, I'm trying to figure out why. Uh, I don't know if it has to do with the restriction uh, or not, or uh, what it is. But uh, I need to start. <laughs> I need to start watching my Facebook more often uh, and uh, and everything. But uh, yeah, uh, it Facebook finally notified me and said, "Hey, there's a new email address associated with your account. Uh, please verify it." And it was some it was somebody else's email address and I was I was like no remove that and I removed it but uh, yeah so somebody was on my account for a few days and uh, uh, posting all kinds of crazy warfare stuff or whatever uh, it was um, they wouldn't show me the post Facebook wouldn't show me the post they just said there, there were posts and all they showed me one picture and it was some kind of militia looking thing but anyway, so if you're in the spindle training group uh, and uh, my profile disappeared for a few days or something like that, or you couldn't access me on Facebook Messenger for a few days, <laughs> that's why. Uh, so we're back, uh, and uh, but I'm on restriction for 30 days. I'm trying to get that lifted, but uh, Facebook's tough to get a hold of. All right, uh, now, uh, this is going to be kind of the start of a little bit of a series. Um, we're going to go... Not not back to basics, but we're gonna we're gonna bring it down a little bit, uh, and we're gonna look at some cool creative ways to make some fun, uh, uh, creative yet elegant looking designs, and uh, you know for signs and things, especially with the holidays and stuff coming up, or you know just in general. Um, we uh, the class tonight's class is gonna be great for you beginners that are that happen to be joining me tonight, uh, but still. There's going to be some good information for you veteran Vetric users. So stick around with me. Hopefully you stick around with me and uh, it's not too, too basic for you. Uh, we're going to do some fun stuff and uh, um, see where we go from there and all. Um, but uh, it should be uh, eventful. Uh, I got a bunch of different little uh, flourish vectors and everything I'll share with you. And also, let me make an announcement. Uh, the chessboard with drawers project the files are the the download for the files are available for download in the part two of that series there was part one where we did the chess pieces and part two where we did the chess board uh, in the part two video the files for that chess board uh, are available for digital download and for those of you that were asking about the Scrabble board um, project uh, that one it's nearly done I, while teaching a class and everything on the Scrabble board project, I didn't do what everybody should be doing. Save your work. Save early, save often, and everything. And uh, that entire project, um, uh, I didn't save anything that we did in the class on that project. So uh, I'm in the process. Uh, it's almost done. Uh, only got a few more uh, tool paths and stuff to make. But I had to rebuild that project from scratch. Uh, and uh, and everything and uh, I even had to refer back to my own video on some of those things that I did 
but uh, that's why that is not up yet. It was supposed to be up the same time I put the chessboard video out. Um, but uh, yeah, I didn't save any of the work and I uh, I lost it. Uh, so save early, save often. Uh, that's very important uh, to do. And uh, uh, it's something I, I've got to practice what I preach when it comes to saving my files and organizing them and stuff. Uh, because I was like, I looked everywhere. I've got six different hard drives and uh, I looked at all of them and I was like, where's that Scrabble board project? And uh, I found an early version of it where there was just a few things that were done. And I was like, that's it? That's that's all I've got? Where's all the stuff that we did <laughs> in class? And it was gone, so I had to rebuild it. So uh, I'll have that one knocked out. It's just a couple more tool paths that I gotta make and then that one will be available. Uh, I'll probably make it available uh, this evening. I'm going to knock it out right after class. All right. Um, let's see here. Yeah, there was no hard drive failures or anything like that. I just didn't save all the stuff that we did in class uh, and all. But, uh, yeah, I've got redundant backups off-site and on-site. Uh, but, yeah, don't if you don't save it, it doesn't save. <laughs> so, save early, save often. All right, let's get started tonight. Uh, we are going to jump in, I believe... I am on camera two. There we go. And, yep, camera two. Let me get me down in the bottom left corner here. Yeah. Cool. All right. Uh, yep, that's good. All right, let me get back to you guys. Okay. All right, so let's first, let's start off with the basic. Let's start off with the job setup. This is gonna be, we're gonna be doing, like I said, some simple signs and everything. And so it's gonna be a single-sided job. We'll even, uh, um, we might transfer it to a two-sided job at the end and throw in some keyholes or something like that. But uh, we're gonna stick with a single-sided job to start with. Uh, right now, I've got the project uh, board length about 36 inches. Uh, by 11 and a quarter, so it's basically a 36 inch uh, 1 by 12, if you will, like if you were going down to the big box store to get some lumber or something. Uh, we're going to touch off on the material surface, and for me, I'm starting in the bottom left corner for the XY datum position. Uh, you can start anywhere you'd like. Uh, and uh, that is our job set up for this evening. Now, of course, these signs will change the sizes of them. We'll do some square signs, we'll do some rectangular signs. And things like that but you're gonna see on the screen that I've got a variety of different kind of uh, vectors uh, options and things I hear some flourishes and stuff and things like this these flourishes and vector files and things uh, they are uh, easily uh, available on uh, like Google uh, uh, and uh, um, uh, three Let's see, hold on. Oh man. Three axis dot. Oh, hold on a second. There's a website. Hold on. It's uh three axis dot io. No, hold on. Well, I'll find it in a minute. I'll let you know. But there's there's different vector sites out there. Etsy is one. Um, uh, but there's all kinds of different vectors and stuff out there. Uh, and uh, I have a variety uh, some of these um, I will just uh, export them out as a DXF whatever ones we end up using and uh, I'll put them in the description of the video uh, but first let's kind of start out with a playful little uh, holiday sign you know holidays are coming up and stuff like that and um, so I've got a rectangular board here now for those of you advanced and beginner uh, when you set up your job, okay, once you click OK, your software now knows your job size. And anywhere that you are typing in a value, you have, these are called uh, uh, calculation boxes, basically, 
because these little boxes are like little calculators. You can add, you can subtract, you can divide, multiply, you can do fraction to decimal conversion, you can do imperial to metric conversion, metric to imperial conversion, uh, and uh, all kinds of things. And in here, as an example, uh, let's say that I want this rectangle to be in the center of my board. Well, I can use the letter X or the letter W for width, the width of my computer screen, to represent my x-axis and the software knows what my x-axis length is uh, as far as the board goes. I can use the letter H or the letter Y in my calculation boxes and that'll represent the height of my material. Um, and also Z, I can use the letter Z or the letter T for thickness and uh, you know it knows how thick my material is. So if I want this to be in the center of my board, the, the center point of this rectangle that I'm going to draw, uh, I can go uh, in my calculation box here on the AX and I can hit H divided by 2 equals, and that'll give me the, uh, I'm sorry, not H. Let's try W divided by 2 equals, uh, and I can get the center point for that. And over here, I can do... Um, H for height divided by two equals, and that will uh, lay me out right here in the center point, that 18 by five and five eighths. Um, and then on my board size, I wanna create a boundary, a kind of a border, if you will, one inch in. So if it's one inch on one side, one inch on the other, that's two inches. So in my width, I can go W minus two equals, and on the height, I can go H or the letter Y, either one, H minus two equals, and then I can click create to create that rectangle right there in the center of my board with that one inch offset all the way around, right? So those calculation boxes are very cool. Uh, now, if you, let's say you had plans, uh, you know, project plans and stuff, and let's say that you work in metric, but the plans are imperial. Uh, you can take a number and uh, let's draw a, another box here. Uh, you can take another number. Let's say it says to make the box uh, eight inches wide and you need to convert it to metric. You can take the number eight and multiply it by the letter M for metric. Hit equals and that'll give you the millimeters uh, for that. And let's say that it was supposed to be uh, three inches tall, uh, you can again, three times M equals, and then you can, you know, create that rectangle, which is, you know, over here. Doo -doo -doo -doo. And of course, I'm in inches here, so it's creating it as inches, because my job is set up in inches, but you get the idea. Uh, let's do it backwards. Let's take that uh, 203 and uh, multiply it by the letter I for imperial. And this and multiply it by the letter I for imperial. Uh, and uh, we'll create that box that I wanted to create right there. So, uh, you you know, you just take your metric numbers and multiply it by uh, I for, to convert them to imperial. Or you take your imperial numbers and multiply it by M to convert it to metric. Uh, depending on what your system is. Now, of course, in my job setup, uh, I'm working in inches, so my big box that I just tried to create was supposed to be a small one. It actually read it in inches and all, so you gotta make sure your job is set up for whatever it is you work in uh, and stuff. So let's get rid of this big box. We don't need this thing out here. Uh, but, uh, so yeah, uh, pretty cool stuff. Now, now that I have this one inch border around my project, I'm gonna take that border and I wanna offset it inward. So the offset tool is the first icon on the last row here of the offset and layout tools. And I wanna offset inward uh, two and a half inches. I want sharp corners and select the new. So that'll create this middle area here. And what I'd like to do is um, I'm going to hold down my shift key. I'm gonna grab this uh, little white box right here on the side. I'm gonna hold my shift key down. That'll keep it centered for me. And I'm just gonna bring it in just a little bit. Now, I don't know if Jeff D. Bold is uh, in class tonight, but this is one of the projects that, uh, you know, I was working with him on and showing him how to do. 
uh, and he uh, he did a great job with his uh, sample and stuff. I wish I had a picture of it, but uh, he uh, shared it in the Digital Woodcarver Owners Group for those of you that uh, are Digital Woodcarver Owners. Now, now that I have this, uh, let's go ahead and create some text. I'm gonna create some text, and I'm gonna put some text up here above, and let's go. Uh, Let's go, Mary, Murdy, Murdy, Mary, <laughs> uh, Christmas, uh, Happy Holidays, whatever you know uh, it may be for your, you. And uh, I want the size of this to be uh, one point five inches tall. And I want this uh, Merry Christmas. I want it aligned. The alignment tool is under transform objects. I want to align it left and right on my board. And I'm going to use the arrow keys on my keyboard. And I'm just going to uh, double click on this and use my arrow keys to bump it down and kind of get it somewhere right in. Let's go down a little bit further. And let's take this and uh, we'll leave that just like that just for a minute and then I'm going to go text box again uh, let's go down here this time and I'm gonna go uh, Merry Christmas to all let's just do to all uh, to all Merry, what's the saying Merry Christmas Happy New Year I know that kind of thing but Merry Christmas to all I guess to all is fine um, and yeah I tell you what let's back that up uh, from from our family to yours. We'll do that. Merry Christmas from our family to yours. Yeah, yeah, that'll be fine. All right, let's get that uh, centered left to right alignment tool again. And Let's go ahead uh, and I'm going to bump this down. I'm, again, I'm using the arrow keys on the keyboard and just bumping this down just a little bit. Wonderful. All right. Now, on here, I want, I actually, um, to, to make this little inner border a little creative and everything, I'm going to let this text overlap it here, but I need my border to kind of go around it uh, in all. Uh, the same thing could account for here too. I'm pretty close to the border here. So what I think I'll do with the bottom text is I'm just going to hold that shift key to keep it where I want it, but I'm going to just thin this down just a little bit. Okay. And, uh, I think I'm going to, uh, increase the spacing on from between R and family. So I'm going to go into my edit text spacing and curve tool. That is the third icon on the third row of create vectors menu. And I'm going to hold down my shift key so it's pushing the letters apart. Uh, and um, let's find that perfect spot. All right, you're going to give me a hard time. Got to find that perfect spot. There we go. Okay, it wants to be up here. I'm just going to pull that apart a little bit. One more click right there. And then I need to put this back. Um, this font's weird. This font's weird, man. You're supposed to put it right between the letters, but it's wanting to move the A and the M instead of between the F and the A. Let me come up here. Where is it at? There's somewhere, I gotta click, there we go. Where is that spot at? Where was that spot at? 
Look how crazy that is. I don't want to move that apart. Where is that spot? It's not there. It's not there. All right, there it is. Isn't that weird? That's weird. Weird. It's the font. It's a weird font. Let me see what's moving. Yeah, that font's strange, ladies and gentlemen. Let me uh, let me get this. All right, I'm hitting Control Z to undo, uh, and uh, because now that I know where this spot is, I can bring that in. There we go. Weird fonts act weird sometimes. You just got to deal with them. All right, now that I've kind of spaced that out, I need to recenter things. So I'm going to go back to my alignment tool and click on recenter to get it centered in there. And um, then I'm going to go ahead and put in here just like the, the family name uh, and stuff. So let's uh, go in here with our text tool. And I'm going to change the font up uh, this time. Uh, let's go with a... Well, it's something festive, but uh, a little straight and forward. Oops, hold on. Click into that box. There we go. And let's go. Let's call this the uh, I don't know the uh, Richardson family. Richardsons, right? All right. So let's go. trying to debate if I want to go all cap not with that font I don't I do want to go all capitals so let me change fonts because some fonts look good as all capitals some fonts do not let's see here let's see here let's see what this font looks like Richardson right all right that's good enough all right let's get that centered now this time I want to center this in the middle of this rectangle so I'm gonna select the rectangle last hold that shift key when you're selecting more than one item and I'm going to align to a selection I'm gonna to align to center to get it right in the center and um, I'm going to uh, do some stretching uh, I'm going to hold the shift key and I'm going to pull this out a bit. Not much right there. And I'm going to grab the bottom one and pull that up a little bit. All right, cool. We'll leave that just like that. All right. Now, uh, let's take a second uh, looking at this because uh, we're about ready to add a couple of little elements. And then we're going to do some cleanup of our vectors. I'm going to show you the different things that we need to do. Um, uh, but real quick, Cadley Peterson says, when selecting the vectors, is there anything in particular you have to look for? When selecting the vectors, is there anything particular you have to look for? Um, not when you're selecting them. I mean, as far as how, you know, selecting your vectors, um, when you select, if you, you can click on a vector to select it, uh, you can draw a box, a selection window around something, and whatever is 100% in the window, when you draw that window from left to right, it'll select. But if you draw that box from right to left, it'll select anything the box touches. Um, Cadley, be a little bit more specific when you say, is there anything you have to look for, such as what? And I'll be able to uh, answer that question a little bit better for you. Uh, because if you're asking just about selecting vectors, do you have to look for anything? Nothing in particular. Uh, but if it's something specific or something, give me an example and uh, we'll go from there. All right, so the first thing that I want to do is I want to uh, get rid of my overlaps here. Uh, so I'll start off with the Richardsons and I'm going to just weld, weld them together. And it's going to ask me, do I want to keep my originals? Uh, or do I want to replace them with this welded text? Now, 
uh, if I create a new layer and keep my original design on its own layer so anything I'm working on if I need to go back to it then it's good to keep those uh, you know that original text in case you want to change your font change your spelling or anything like that so in the case of this I haven't created a new layer so I am gonna say keep and what it's done is it's put the welded text on top of my original uh, font so it is selected it is pink if we look here you can kind of see the pink and black so what I'm gonna do quickly is I'm gonna right click while it's still selected and I'm gonna move that to a new layer and I'm just gonna call this my welded text layer and um, and all that jazz and I'm gonna click OK and layer one I'll go ahead and just name that my original layer right my original design layer and that way I have uh, you know the welded text and everything will be on one layer and the original will be on another um, let's turn off the welded text layer for a moment um, now if I have that welded text layer active right now let's well let's turn it on and make it active um, I can go ahead and weld the Merry Christmas and uh, keep that as well uh, and I can weld the from our family to yours uh, and keep that also and now um, those three items are on that welded text layer because it was the active layer when I did that uh, at this time uh, so uh, let's come back in here and on the original layer let's go ahead and take our two borders right our two borders here and let's go ahead and move them over or copy them over let's say copy them to that welded text layer so we can turn our original off and it's kind of protected you know and then we're, we're just working in this this new layer here uh, with all of our welded text and stuff like that and if we screw up or if something goes wrong we can go back to our original and start over again Right, so it's always good. Layers is a great way to keep things separated. It's a great way to keep original designs that are going to be evolving uh, and things like that, um, whatever the case may be. Right. All right, now let's go ahead and um, for the time being, let's go back into our original design because we're not quite done with it yet as far as the original design. I want to add some other elements to it, uh, to the original kind of layout. And then I'll move them over to uh, the welded text layer in just a moment uh, and uh, or copy them over to that and then we'll work in that to finish up so the first thing I would like to do is I'm gonna take this uh, little bell here this little bell with a bow this little Christmas bell here and um, I'm gonna bring it in probably right about here and I'm gonna go ahead and mirror it to the other side now uh, I can just go to the mirror tool and I can make sure that create mirrored copy is selected I can flip about job center and flip horizontally and it'll pop it right over there okay uh, it'll put it in the exact same spot on the other side and if any of you are uh, veterans and all and you're into keyboard shortcuts uh, with that object selected um, I can just hold the control and the shift key and hit the letter H to do the same thing control shift H to do the same thing all right so <clears throat> now with this uh, these vectors here what I want is I want this border to kind of come around and encompass this bell on both sides uh, and I'm not going to redraw the rectangle border. I'm just going to do some creative trimming and and offsetting and stuff, if you will. Um, so before we do that, let me see here. Cadley kind of um, rephrased her question. Sorry, wrong choice of words. Referring to when choosing them online size complexity etc oh so when you're choosing your vectors the first thing is if it, you know google is your best friend when searching for uh images because when you are when you and use the keyword vectors so like in my case uh flourish vectors uh uh decorative flourish vectors holiday flourish vectors angel flourish vectors all these kind of things 
uh, these search terms, but the keyword vectors is gonna filter things out uh, and show you images that you can kind of work with. And then in Google Images, there's a tool button uh, where you can click on tools and you can filter out by size. And you want medium or large images, high resolution images. It's gonna be better for tracing and things like that. Uh, so uh, as far as complexity and things like that, you know, whatever floats your boat, uh, I mean, the vectors can be uh, complex, they can be simplistic, uh, they can be, you know, whatever, you know, uh, you, you wrangle up and stuff, uh, but um, just whatever happens to kind of fit. And we're going to be using all of these in some form or fashion today. Uh, in our different signs, we're going to make uh, uh, just a few simple different signs and stuff, and uh, you know, kind of show some, you know, just some basic creative stuff. All right, so uh, we are uh, going to take these two objects here, uh, and we are going to offset the outside border of it. So the first thing that I want to do is make sure I'm in my original layer here and I'm going to come in um, and I've got the layout of what I want. So I'm going to do all of my work. I'm going to do all my work on my other layer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select both of these bells and I'm going to right click and I'm going to copy them over to that welded text layer. Uh, it's no longer welded text, so let's go up and we're going to call this, we're going to rename this, I'm just going to call it my working layer, right? Whatever you want to call it. I'm just going to call it my working layer. And that's what I'm going to be working in. So I'll turn off the original now because I'm not going to add anything else to this as far as the, the initial design. This is it. So we can turn that off now and we can come into this layer and then we can start doing all of our little trimming, cutting, whatever it may be. Make sure that layer is active. Make sure you can see it here. Uh, that means that's what you're working in now. And what I'd like to do is I'm going to right click and ungroup this uh, bell here. And I'm gonna ungroup it onto the groups layer where it's at right now on the layer it's on right now. And uh, same thing here. I'm gonna ungroup onto the groups layer, all right? Where I'm at right now, the layer that I'm working on because I just want this outside boundary right here. I wanna offset it out just a small amount to create a little boundary that I can trim my rectangle to. So I'm gonna offset using that offset tool again. I'm gonna offset it outward and I'm gonna go outward. Um, let's go a 16th of an inch. Uh, I don't want sharp corners on this. I don't want to delete the original, so uncheck those two boxes and offset that outward. Now looking at this, it makes me want to go an eighth of an inch instead of a sixteenth. Let's undo that. Let's go an eighth of an inch, 0.125. Wonderful. Great. Now I want to do the same thing with the other side. I'm going to select the outside boundary and offset outward an eighth of an inch. Perfect. Now this boundary that I've just created is uh, simply what I'm going to kind of trim to. I'm going to use my scissors and trim to. Um, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go into node editing on this rectangle here. Node editing is the second icon on the first row of edit objects. And this span, this line right here, I'm going to right click and I'm going to delete that span. I'm going to get rid of it. I'm going to do the same thing, same thing over here. Okay, I'm going to delete that span and get rid of it as well. All right, now I'm going to take my scissors and on that offset boundary on the inside, I'm going to start on the inside. I'm going to trim it away so it'll trim it right up to that those two lines that I have. And then I'm going to come in here and trim this little line away here and that's now going to connect that bottom line to this outside boundary all the way around to here and if I trim this away as well, now it's completed it, okay? It's made it a closed vector. Now that I've done that, this vector here I no longer need. I can delete that. And the same thing with this one down here. 
I can select it and I'm just hitting the delete key on the keyboard. So now I've kind of created this boundary around this bell. Let's do the same thing over here again with our scissors. We're going to trim the inside of that offset away. We're gonna connect it right there so that connects these two lines together here. And we're gonna do the same thing down here. Once I've done that, I can just select that line that's remaining and hit delete to delete it. Same thing here as well. So I've created that boundary around. Now what's gonna happen is I'm gonna do a, a V carve with a flat depth so it gives the Richardson's name a raised look as well as the bell and everything. It's gonna have kind of raised look and it's everything else around those items are gonna be pocketed away. They're gonna be milled down. Uh, and then uh, very simply, uh, the Merry Christmas and everything is going to be um, carved uh, in just a simple V carve. But remember I said I have this, uh, this Y going into this border and I need this rectangle to kind of come around here, right? I want it to kind of come around. I want the Mary to have that little bit of an overlap there. So what I'm gonna do is on the uh, word Mary here, I'm just gonna do an offset and I'm gonna go outward uh, a small amount. And this time I am gonna go uh, about a 16th of an inch. So 0.0625, uh, too many decimal points there. And I'm going to click offset just to create that offset there. And once again, just like we did a moment ago, I'm actually gonna use my scissors. Uh, I'm gonna trim this away. I'm gonna trim this away and I'm gonna trim this line away here. And then all I have to do is come into that line, that remaining line. And uh, now you can see my border just kind of dips underneath that and all. Now we had some additional offset lines that were created. Um, so make sure you clean up any of those that, that might have occurred. But now I just have kind of this little dip here where the Mary is, right? Uh, and, and stuff. You know, it gives it a little bit of character. Um, so. The last thing I'd like to do to this is on this rectangle, I'd like to create some nice internal radiuses here. So I'm gonna go back into the rectangle tool and when I'm in the rectangle tool, uh, I can change the radius to an external or an internal. And I wanna do an internal and I have these green nodes and I can actually pull these green nodes in or out uh, manually if I want to kind of you know play around with what size radius I want or I can simply just type it in over there if I know just around about what radius I want uh, I'm actually gonna pull this out and uh, go something like that that looks good all right now what we're gonna do is um, in something like this uh, there's all kinds of things you can do as far as finishing, right? And uh, this would look very cool uh, by having a little bit of a contrast of color. So I would most likely paint the entire board, the blank board, a, a, a solid color. Uh, it could be festive, it could be you know a red, a green, a blue, whatever. It could be just a simple dark color, you know, black, brown, whatever, float your boat. Um, and then when we carve, um, we can use that, the natural color of the wood as the contrasting color. Like if I was carving this in a maple or a pine or, uh, even like a cedar or something, that contrasting color of the wood could be the, uh, kind of the contrasting color of, uh, you know, once I paint the entire board. So to represent this, we're, we're ready to create tool paths now for this sign. And so uh, let's go into our preview window here. And currently right now I have just a, you know, a uh, kind of a uh, Canadian maple color board. Well, I wanna kind of represent, you know, the board being painted, right? So let's go up with a solid color, okay, here. And um, let's go with, uh, Let's go with kind of a hunter green, okay? Just bear with me, kind of something festive. Uh, it could be whatever color you want. 
Now, uh, so that's going to be kind of the, you know, I would paint the board, you know, that color. Now let's go back to our 2D view and let's create some toolpaths. So the first thing is I've got this border here. Uh, that's going to be a profile toolpath. Anytime you're following a single line with a bit, whether you're cutting on the inside, outside, or on the line, it is a profile toolpath. So I'm going to be using a V bit to cut this border in. Uh, I could use an end mill, I could use whatever, but I want to use a V bit. I want a nice little V carved border. And I'm going to probably carve this border about a little more than an eighth of an inch. So I'm going to go probably about 0.15 inches deep and I'm gonna select my 60 degree v-bit uh, for this job and let's go with this bit here okay and select that and I want to go on the line I want the bit cutting right on the line okay so I'm gonna title this down here at the bottom of the screen I'm gonna title this border and uh, we'll create that, uh, we'll preview that toolpath. Now when it carves, of course, um, you know, it's gonna fill in with a color, whatever my global fill is, you know, for this uh, and stuff. And um, let's make that global fill more of a lighter color. Let's say that it was kind of almost like a, a pine or whatever. Um, but this is where, you know, you can also do some additional painting and stuff if you want. Uh, Jeff did a really cool border with his design. He did like a gold border and all. It was really nice uh, and all. Um, if you want your border to be wider, use a wider angle V-bit. Uh, or you can cut your 60 degree down a little bit deeper and that'll widen it up. I'm only cutting about 0.15 inches deep. So it's just a nice little decorative border. All right. Um, now... For the next one, uh, let's do the Merry Christmas here. And I'm gonna also hold the shift key down and do from our family to yours. We'll do that together. Uh, they will be the same toolpath. This is gonna be a V carved toolpath for this. And uh, we're gonna have a zero start depth, uh, no flat depth on this using the 60 degree V bit, my 60 degree quarter inch V bit. And this is gonna be my, um, upper and lower text and we'll calculate that all right now it says uh, there are some issues with the vectors and everything uh, and it's kind of a warning you know saying hey there's some overlap somewhere and stuff now I welded this text so that got rid of mostly overlaps but there's probably still some in the font so I am gonna pop over to the vector validator real quick because it is a useful tool to uh, help point out those issues, okay? And so it will indicate where these issues may fall, right? And I've got uh, just one, two, three, four, five, six. And um, if we go into, let's close this tool for a minute. If we go in and zoom really tightly, we can see a little anomaly. I don't know if you can see that on the screen, but there's a little anomaly right there. And if I go into node editing mode, I've got a bunch of um, nodes that are kind of like twisted and on top of each other and stuff. And uh, as an example, if I pull one out, you can see that there's, you know, if I pull one to the side and this other one to the side, you can see that the, the font was kind of overlapping this triangular piece right uh, you know and, and everything um, so the triangular piece I don't need uh, so I can just uh, you know uh, let's not delete the whole thing uh, let's delete that so it was just a little anomaly that was sitting on top of the line there and everything um, coming back over uh, to here um, let's go back and select our text again and let's go to that vector validator and uh, find those uh, I've got two more spots one in between the R and the O and one at the end of the R here so let's go in and look at this and see what we have so we have that similar kind of anomaly there and again it it's selecting by itself if I scale it up you can see it's just this little triangle it's just something in the font right so we don't need it 
sometimes we have to do some node editing and clean up. Sometimes, you know, uh, in this case, it was just a little anomaly on top of the line that we can just select and delete. So we've got one more over here on the R, O O U R. And generally, when you uh, zoom in, you can see that little anomaly. And I'm just going to select it and uh, I'll hit delete to get rid of it. Right now, we had one of those or a couple of those in the Merry Christmas as well uh, on this particular font. So let me find those once again. And uh, they were here on this R, this R, and on that R. So the letter R's, uh, basically. So I'm going to select it and hit delete. I'm going to select it and hit delete. Notice I'm drawing my box from left to right. Uh, and I'm just selecting hit delete. That way it deletes what I'll select it. And, and, it won't, and then unless it's 100% in that box, it won't select it. Well, since I know kind of what they are, the little small anomalies and everything, um, I don't need to... Uh, I don't need to go into note editing. I don't need to do anything. I, I, I can, you know, differentiate that. So if I come back in here and I select this again and do that, uh, there is one more here. Now this one, even though I deleted it, it still didn't go. So it may be a little bit different than the others. So let's go in and zoom in and see what it is. And it is. This one is actually tied into the line. So if I go into node editing, I've got these three nodes here. Uh, I'm just going to, uh, let's pull this one up because I know it's the two lines there from earlier, same way I did it. And I'm going to uh, pull this one out just a little bit and this one as well. And let's pull this one back this way. And you can see that gap there, right? You know where these overlaps were. Well, I don't need this node, so I'm gonna delete that point. Uh, let me undo that, Control Z. Uh, not that point. I'm going to delete this point, the one on the inside. I'm also going to delete this point and uh, that one I'll leave alone. So I've got, uh, well, let's see here. Let me delete that one as well and I'll just fix the letter. So I'll drag this anchor out and fix this back like that. All right. So now we're all cleaned up. If we want to validate, uh, you know, that we're cleaned up, we can do the vector validator one last time and there's no issues. OK, so let's go back to where we were. We were selecting this text here and we're going to calculate that. And uh, we're going to preview that visible toolpath and that will be our um, text there. OK. All right. Now, let's see if I can go into my view here and uh, let's see if I can do light follows a user. That way it's a little brighter for you guys and girls so you can see it as I turn it and stuff. A little bit clearer for you. And um, so there's my uh, upper and lower text. And then finally for this uh, toolpath, we're going to select the entire middle here, right? And um, as I do that, I realize that I'm going to select some of my lower text, right? So what I'm going to do with my lower text is, uh, or I'm sorry, what I'm going to do with my middle item here is I'm going to draw a box from right to left that's going to encompass most of this design. And that leaves me with a few little things that I got to hold the shift key down and select. Because once I do this, I'm going to group it all together so I don't have to do that again if I need to do something different with the toolpath. So make sure you select the remaining vectors. And I'm going to hit G on the keyboard, group, G for group. So that way all I have to do is just select it next time. Now this particular toolpath is going to have a flat depth. I want those letters and, and everything kind of raised and stuff. Uh, so I'm going to uh, do a V-carve toolpath. This time I'm going to do a flat depth. And for me, I like an eighth of an inch flat depth. Uh, get the, the, the eighth of an inch uh, with a 60 degree view. It's just nice, clean looking uh, a cut. So that's it could be whatever you want it to be, whatever depth you want, you know, and stuff. But for me, an eighth inch looks good. Now, because I have all this flat area that's, you know, going to need to be carved and all, 
I'm going to use a flat area clearance tool. Uh, and I do have this small area here that uh, the end mill is not going to be able to fit into my quarter inch end mill. So I'll be using a V bit uh, to kind of, it'll, it'll clear that out unless I use a couple of different bits. So the first bit that I am going to select is my quarter inch end mill. That's going to do a majority of the work uh, and everything and, and all. Uh, and I want to do it as a raster cut. You know, I want to carve with the grain on this. Uh, less cleanup for me to do. Um, do I want to do it as a raster? Yep, I'll do it as a raster cut. And then I am going to select a smaller bit to kind of come in and touch up some of the finer areas and all. And um, I did offset that line outward an eighth of an inch, remember? Uh, but it's right at an eighth of an inch offset. So if I choose an eighth inch bit, it might not quite fit in there. If I would have went 0.126 or something, then I could have given myself some room. But I do have a very small bit, uh, a sixteenth inch end mill, because it's only going to be touching up very small areas that the quarter inch bit couldn't fit into. So I will use the sixteenth inch end mill for the rest of the cleanup. And I'm going to, this is going to be my center uh, design. And I'm going to go ahead and calculate that. Okay. All right. So uh, when we uh, preview that visible toolpath, the quarter inch end mill is going to come do the majority of the work. The 16th inch is going to come touch up the little areas. And then uh, the... Um, v-bit will come and do the rest of the work and so the let's turn off uh, the uh, colors for a minute and let's go just for a minute to a clean board just so you can see the design a little bit better so we have kind of this pocketed out area where those letters are raised and let's go look at the bells so you can see the detail in the bells and what's raised on that and so um, if we if we have that color, uh, let's go back into that solid color there of that green. And uh, you know when it, if it's a lighter wood and all, um, you know you're gonna have kind of that contrast, right? Uh, and just a very simple, fun little sign. Uh, the top of the letters will be you know that still that uh, you know that nice you know solid whatever color you painted the top of your board. Um, and uh, if you wanted to, you could add different colors uh, to your border, to your other text, if you if you want to, um, you know, uh, do that and all. But um, you know, just a very simple, elegant layout, right? Uh, and Roger Brown says, you know, holly berries might look good in the corners, and that would exactly right. Uh, kool Aid says, what kind of paint or sealer do you use? Uh, for your outside projects. So uh, outdoor projects, depending on what type of material I'm carving on, uh, majority of uh, my outdoor signs, um, they're going to be um, the uh, uh, I always get my three letters mixed up. Uh, HDU, high density urethane, um, sign foam, uh, and uh, I'll use automotive paints uh, in clear coat finishes. Uh, if it's a wood sign, uh, I'm going to probably, I'll use a uh, very simple, um, it could be uh, a Rust-Oleum, uh, you know, or uh, a Valspar just rattle can paint and then I'll once that paint cures and stuff I'll put a urethane finish like a spar varnish uh, urethane uh, finish and stuff on it um, and uh, yeah so probably you know uh, I'm just a run down to Lowe's now my automotive paints I buy from an, a specialist that makes automotive paints and all and they're 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 not cheap they're expensive but um, that's for my HDU foam to give it that really metallic kind of almost finished look and stuff, uh, and um, and all. But uh, but yeah, a Valspar, 
Uh, I really like, believe it or not, uh, for uh, a uh, kind of a muted finish, nothing too glossy and all. I honestly like the project paint. It's literally the least expensive paint at Lowe's. You'll find it at the very bottom shelf where all the rattle cans are. Uh, and it's called project paint. Um, and uh, it really, especially the flat black, uh, really creates a, just a nice, dull, deep, rich color. Um, I also like uh, the... Um, uh, Besides the, you know, the, I like Valspar, but most of the paints now, most of the rattle can paints, I mean, it's hard to find them. They, they always got this now paint and primer, paint and primer, paint and primer mix, and it makes it real thick and shitty in my opinion, excuse my language, but, uh, uh, you know, I want to paint. I don't want a primer. I want a nice paint. Um, the uh, stencil film uh stencil uh not stencil film um sign paint uh marsh m-a-r-s-h marsh uh it's a it's a spray ink uh it's really nice it's all the primary colors red black white blue green all that stuff uh it doesn't come in like aquamarine and red baron and all these funky colors that other paints come into but it's just the primary colors uh, but it's a spray ink. It's a professional sign paint. Uh, it's really good too. You can get it on Amazon. All right. Enough of that question. Hopefully that answered your question for you. Uh, let's see here. Um, remember to save and save often. Yes, let's do that. Let's hit save. I've already saved it. Sign flourishes. So I'm going to hit save to update my changes. And then we're going to move on to another sign. Uh, thanks, Debbie. Um, Laney, how long did it take to carve this? Ronnie Probert. All right, so this particular sign, uh, if, as far as time, so based on my tools, speeds, and feeds, and my DWC 2440, uh, we're looking at about 2 hours and 11 minutes. Uh, you've got 3 minutes on the border, uh, 10 minutes on the upper and lower text. Uh, the center design, um, you've got 21 minutes with the uh, quarter inch end mill. You got an hour with the 16th inch end mill. So the hour on the 16th inch end mill, let me see what all the 16th inch end mill is doing. So it's doing a majority of that. Uh, I can reduce that down by adding an eighth inch end mill in there. Uh, let's do that. Let's. So what are we at right now as far as time? Um, we are at two hours and 11 minutes. I'm gonna add one more bit uh, to that tool path. Let's go in and add the eighth inch end mill as well. And calculate that. Okay. And uh, let's see what our time is. Uh, two hours and eight minutes. So I didn't shave that much time off. Um, I only saved nine minutes off the 16th inch end mill and the second bit six. Uh, uh, yeah, so let's see what that eighth inch is doing and if it's even worth having it in there. So there's only a few spots that it's touching up. Uh, the 16th of an inch end mill still has to kind of go in there and, uh, you know, get right in there and stuff. So is it worth the nine minutes? No. So I'm going to go back just to the two bits. Um, and remove that, recalculate that. So just the, so about two hours and 11 minutes to do this job. Okay, all right, now let's go ahead and uh, let's take this um, here and we're going to, since we're on that working layer, let's go ahead and rename that layer one more time and we're gonna call this working layer one. <clears throat> and uh, the original design layer, let's rename that. Original design one, because there's gonna be a couple of more. All right, let's create a new layer here and call this original design layer two. We'll start fresh. Let's go ahead and turn off those other layers. Uh, let's see here. Turn off those tool paths. 
There we go. Okay. Now, let's see. I'm back in layer one, my original design, because all my flourishes and everything are on there. Matter of fact, I'm going to select all of those and move them to a new layer called flourishes. That way I can have my originals turned off. Flourishes. Click OK. And let's turn off that original now. There we go. All right. So let's see here. Let's do something a little bit different. Let's go in and create a new sheet. Version 11 sheets is a wonderful thing. Um, and... Uh, uh, it's pretty cool. We can add multiple size boards and projects and all. And since I'm doing multiple size projects uh, for this, um, you know, uh, there, we're going to call this sheet two. And let's make this one a little bit wider. Now, this one I'm going to glue up a panel, right? Uh, I'm going to go a little bit wider and a little bit narrower. So uh, let's edit this. And for the second sheet, I'm going to go 24 inches on the width. And I'm going to go 18 on the height. Okay. And uh, let's start off with, once again, a rectangular border. Now, again, uh, this is now sheet two, and I'm in sheet two. So the software knows what sheet two is. Uh, as far as my width and height for the sheet that I'm on. So if I go uh, W divided by two equals and H divided by two equals, that's my center point for this project. And I want to do on this one, I want a, I'm gonna go with a one and a quarter inch border. So that's one and a quarter, one and a quarter is two and a half. So I'm gonna go uh, W minus 2.5 equals and H minus 2.5 equals. Click create, okay. So neat little shortcuts and stuff in those calculation boxes that you can do um, and all. Now, if you wanna know how to do it another way, let me get rid of that. Uh, here's another way, uh, delete. I can draw a rectangle and snap it to the corner of my board all the way through. I can offset that rectangle inward 2.5 inches, square corners, delete the original. Okay. Uh, what? Not 2.5, 2 and a quarter. What I do? I went 1 and a quarter on 1 and a quarter. Uh, yeah. I need one and a quarter. Don't do two and a half. 1.25 inches. There we go. It does it automatically all the way around. Uh, and uh, so that's another way of doing it, right? So either way, whatever whatever floats your boat. Um, for this one, let's add some decorative flourishes in the corner. Someone was talking about holly berries, right? And things like that. Uh, so... Um, we're gonna use a flourish. Now, I'm in sheet two, right? And so all my flourishes, they're kind of on that layer, but they're on sheet one, right? Uh, and, uh, you know, these flourishes here, they're on, um, they're on sheet one. So I need to go back to my sheets and uh, sheet one here. And uh, let me pull over, let's grab a couple of, we'll grab this one here. Let's copy that to sheet number two. Let's grab this one here. Copy that to sheet number two. And That'll do. That'll do for sheet number two. So let's go back to sheet number two, make it active. All right, and uh, let's take this and bring it over to the center for a minute. Let's take this, bring it over here for a moment. And let's uh, answer a quick question here. Um, 
does the order of your end mills matter uh, in the clearance tool section? In other words, the software selects from largest to smallest. Yes, it does. So if we uh, go back and look at the tool path uh, in sheet one, uh, when I added those tools, it doesn't matter what order that I add them, uh, it is going to uh, go largest to smallest. It's automatically gonna put them in order. Uh, so my quarter inch end mills first, my 16th of an end mill second. So it, it, I don't care if you select them in different orders, it's gonna automatically put them in order in the tool path. If we went and looked at that uh, tool path, uh, you would see they're listed in order here. And if I added, let's say for instance, if I added the eighth inch end mill back in there, you'll see it throws it in the middle, right? So it puts it in order for you. Okay, let's go back to sheet two here. All right, so in this one, uh, what we're gonna do is let's size this vector down just a tad bit, and I'm gonna hit the number nine key. These are keyboard shortcuts uh, to do rotations, right? So uh, the number nine key, every time I hit it, it'll rotate counterclockwise, and the number zero key is clockwise in 45 degree increments. So for this, I'm gonna go uh, here and I'm gonna drag it up to here. And the thing I would like to do is make sure it's laid out kind of centered in this area here. And so if I were to take and ungroup this for a moment. On this object here, there's a center point. And I can grab and snap that to my corner there. So I know it's kind of centered uh, at that snap point there based on this part of the design right here. So I'm gonna hit G again to group it back together. You know, um, just now that I have that. And I'm going to go ahead and offset that, or not offset, I'm sorry, I'm gonna go ahead and mirror that. Uh, I'm gonna flip it about job center. I'm gonna create a mirror copy and I'm gonna flip it horizontally first, then vertically, then horizontally again. Okay, we're gonna put that uh, kind of around here and all um, on those four corners. Now, let me take a peek at something real quick here. Yeah, I'm good there. All right, I'm gonna do a little something uh, in here. Um, I just don't know what it is yet. This uh, object here, I'm gonna ungroup it. Ungroup. And I'm going to uh, bring this up a little bit. This one here, I'm going to bring down just a little bit. And then I'm gonna select both of them, hold that shift key down and I'm gonna select both of them and I'm just gonna make sure they're centered. Both of them are centered in the material. So I'm gonna go to the alignment tool and center, right? Okay, and um, now, you know, whatever, you know, I want to do here, I can do. Uh, let's say that this is a sign for my business or, or what have you, uh, it, or it could be a house sign, uh, it could be, uh, you know, a sign for, you know, someone's initials, it could be whatever you want it to be. Um, this space, I'm not gonna try to fill this space up with just one word or one something, right? Uh, so my uh, company is a Spindle TV. So let's go uh, with some text in here. And I'm gonna go uh, Spindle TV. And my font is a hell Oh, where, what is my font? Okay. Uh, 
let's go two inches tall. Let's go two and a half, 2.5. That's good. All right. Uh, that is not my font. Hold on a second. I'm not, my marketing guys are the one that create my logo. So let me see what font is my font. I don't know what our font is. Um, could have swore it was, uh, what was that? Okay, there. Okay, let's go two and a quarter inches tall. All right, I'm going to make sure I'm centered left to right on here. Uh, and I'm gonna bring this, uh, that's actually a good spacing there. Uh, let's add some more text uh, and all. Let's go, um, let's go with a, ba -ba 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 -ba. Uh, let's go with a phone number. Make sure that I'm centered left to right. And then I'm gonna end this up with, um, This one, let's go 1.75 inches tall. Get that centered left to right. And I'm going to bring that up something like that. All right probably put a house number and something in there, but we'll call that good for right now. Now, these objects and all, I'm okay with the spacing uh, between them, but what I'm gonna do is I want, I actually want the phone number centered between these two things. So I'm gonna select this and this, holding that shift key down, and I'm gonna group them together temporarily. Then I can select my, te uh, that number there, and I can select my group, and I can use the align uh, up and down to get it centered in there and um, it is it is centered uh, but it's centering it based on the top and the bottom here all thinking I'm thinking I'm gonna bump that down just a little bit because that would drive me crazy. Okay, that'll be good there. It was centering it based on, I've got uh, capital text and upper and lower, so it was kind of centering it based on that, but it wasn't exactly center because it's two different height texts, two different heights. So that didn't work. I thought it would work, but it didn't. All right, uh, now I actually wanna take this design here I actually want to take this design. I really, really want to take that design. No, I'm happy. I'm good with it, that. All right, so here's what I got to do. Same way we did that inner text on the other sign, I'm going to take my uh, objects here. Okay, and this time they're grouped together, right? They're, or they're grouped individually, but they're grouped. So um, I'm gonna offset them outward uh, a certain distance. I'm gonna offset those four items 
outward and for me I do like an eighth of an inch so I'll offset it out an eighth of an inch I'm not going to create sharp corners on this and uh, I'm going to offset that okay to create those boundaries all the way around okay you with me good all right now any other uh, any other items if there's any other things pink uh, that are offset besides this outside border then we want to delete them and the easiest way to delete them is to, I want to keep this outside border so I would hold the shift key down and I would turn off that outside border turn off that one turn off that one in this corner and this one as well and if there was anything else left pink in there, I would just hit delete to get rid of it because I don't want that. I just want that outside boundary. And uh, with this outside boundary, once again, uh, I can very simply come in and uh, I can pretty much just weld this. Remember last time I trimmed, right? We trimmed and everything. Uh, well, this time, if I take uh, this object, all four of these, And the rectangle and I weld them together it's going to connect everything and get rid of all the stuff that I don't want very easily right so the first time we trimmed with our scissors and connected everything and then got rid of what we didn't need this time we just simply selected those outside boundaries along with our rectangle and we welded together two ways to get to the same result right okay cool all right now this one is uh, done so I'm actually gonna select the entire sign for this one uh, and we are going to do a V car toolpath again I'm a big fan of the eighth of an inch uh, depth the look with a 60 degree V bit so I'm gonna leave that but I will this time uh, use a, uh, a larger, uh, you know, uh, kind of a bit. I'm not going to go into, I'll use the 16th. Uh, yeah, I'll keep the 16th in there. But I am going to go with um, the eighth inch this time. I am going to add that in there. And that's it. That's it. I'll just do that. I could go with a half inch end mill as well to reduce the time. Uh, yeah, let's add in a half inch end mill also. I don't mind doing the bit changes if it's going to save me time. All right, so I've got a half inch end mill that I'm going to change to a quarter. It'll do the quarter cleanup. Eighth inch will get what the quarter couldn't. Sixteenth will get what the eighth inch couldn't. Uh, my 60 degree V bit is going to be the last bit to do all the decorative edge work. Uh, let's go ahead and calculate this. And while that's calculating, Carl says, uh, last week I upgraded to Aspire and all went well. Today I received a flash drive from Vetric. What's it for? Uh, depending on where you're located I mean I'm surprised they actually sent out a flash drive uh, they don't do that really much anymore uh, and everything um, but uh, the flash drive is just your backup of your software you should also have uh, an account when you log into vetric.com um, you uh, you have an account uh, where it's all digital you may have selected when you did your order, you may have selected to send you the media as well. So they sent you a flash drive. And all that is is your, uh, it's your software, just a backup. All right, let's go uh, in here with uh, kind of a maple. All right, so let's preview this visible toolpath here. Uh, the half inch end mill is going to come in and do a majority of the work. Uh, and. Um, in pocketing around all of our design and uh, cutting where the half inch end mill cannot fit the v bit will come or the quarter inch end mill will come in and do some work the eighth inch the sixteenth uh, will come in and then the v bit will come and do the final work 
and everything and all and uh, let's turn this color let's go black here so you can kind of see uh, let's oh not black that's a little too raw aggressive let's go with a kind of a Um, what's a good color let's see here just so you can kind of see uh, sign, but uh, just a nice looking uh, like a sign here um, yeah let's bear with me a second more colors uh, let's go with a brown customize it let's pull that down to there okay there we go um, so uh, we've got that nice uh, those nice decorative kind of um, corners just to give it a little bit of something uh, we could do a nice texture in here now that texture would uh, a, a, a really increase the run time uh, in all uh, but it could give some character to the background uh, using the texturing toolpath uh, it's a fun little toolpath to play around with but um, so just a nice uh, very simple elegant sign let's turn off the color for just a moment uh, so we can kind of evaluate you know those raised characters and everything and all so just a nice very simple yet elegant looking sign right nothing uh, nothing crazy about it uh, you know um, we're just utilizing some flourishes to kind of just give us a little bit of a I don't know a little bit of an appeal or something um, let's uh, Let me think. I want to show you a texturing tool path. Yeah, let me show you it real quickly. Uh, we're going to do a texture on the inside of this. Still got all the vectors selected here. Uh, we're going to use, uh, for me, I like using an eighth inch tapered ball nose. Um, let's go eighth inch tapered ball nose. Uh, this pocket is an eighth inch deep, so that's where we're going to start at. I'm going to go with... Uh, a eighth inch maximum cut depth variety it'll be going between eighth and a sixteenth cut length I'm gonna go with one inch max cut length um, overlap 30 is good step over I'm gonna step over half the diameter of the bit and I'm gonna go a 10 degree angle on this uh, I do not want my ball nose bit hitting my letters my border and any of this stuff so I want it to stay away from those items by an eighth of an inch uh, and uh, we'll calculate that out okay and uh, we can preview that visible toolpath And so we can give, uh, you know, just a little bit of texture in the background uh, just to give it a little character. It doesn't have to be so aggressive. You can be lighter, you know, it could be more aggressive, you know, bigger bit, whatever the case may be. But uh, so just a nice little texture to that. Okay. 
All right, so that's sign number two. All right, let's go in and we're going to do uh, one more and then uh, we're going to call it a night. So let's go into our sheets. Uh, let's go in, add a new sheet. Uh, this one, because I'm going to be doing some angel wings on this one or an angel. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be doing some angel wings on this one. Um, I want to go edit. I want to go, um, I'm going to stick with 24 inches, but I'm going to narrow it down a bit. Let's go 11 and a quarter uh, back to our one by 12, but this time 24 inches in length. Have that nice uh, rectangular shape to it. Yeah. Yeah, I like it, okay. 11 and a quarter by 24. Okay, now on this one, uh, very, 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 very similar. I mean, all the same kind of, I'm just trying to give you some little basic things you can play around with. Uh, on this one, I will do it uh, the old school way, uh, not old school, but the other way. Uh, I'm gonna just drag a box out to uh, the perimeter of my board. I'm going to offset it inward I'm gonna go one and a quarter inches, square corners, delete the original to create that. I'm gonna go back to the rectangle tool and, um, no, I'm gonna leave it square for right now. I'm gonna leave it square. All right, this one I'm going to come in and This one, it's gonna really, let me see here. I'm gonna undo that offset and I'm gonna redo it. I'm gonna offset inward on this one. I'm gonna go three inches. Three inches. There we go. I'm going to, uh, because we're gonna do a cutout this time, we're gonna do a profile cut, cutting out the shape. I'm gonna go with an ellipse here and I'm gonna go to the center of my board and I'm gonna draw an ellipse out. Uh, let's see. Looks good. I'm going to Make sure I'm centered on that ellipse. I am. I'm gonna take those two objects and weld them together. Make sure you don't have the outside vector selected. Uh, let's delete that outside vector. I don't need it anymore. All right, let's take these two objects and I'm gonna weld them together to create that kind of ellipse with that uh, decorative border here. Uh, and I am going to offset that outward. Uh, oh man, uh, three quarters of an inch. Let me see what that. Yep, that's good. Three quarters of an inch. Okay. Now, in here, uh, let's go back to our sheets for a minute. Let's go back to sheet one just for a second because my flourishes, remember, they're on sheet one. And um, uh, yeah, let's hit save real quick. Thanks for the reminders, guys. I get into this stuff and I forget. Um, now, I have two. I'm going to use this little angel too, I think. I've got two sets of angel wings. I've got this kind of nice basic set and then I have this one kind of designer set here I'm gonna go with this designer set uh, copy to sheet number three and I also want these two vectors here 
this one and that one. Copy to sheet number three. Oh. Let me think. I'm trying to uh, something that has a little bit of a curvature to it. This one right here. I'm going to copy that to sheet three. Copy to sheet three. Okay. All right. Let's go back over to sheet three. And let's grab these objects and drag them a little bit closer. Okay. All right. Now, I don't know if I'm going to use these two flourishes. I'll think about that. But this one. I want to size this up. Should have went with a bigger board. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to size it. Uh, let's see. Let me stretch it. There we go. Okay. Uh, I am going to mirror that. Uh, again, the keyboard shortcut is shift control V or in the mirror tool, just uh, create a mirror copy, flip about job center and flip vertically. Okay. Now, on the wings, I'm going to ungroup them uh, and uh, I'm going to size them down. This is going to make sense here in a minute. All right. Uh, these two objects here, I'm going to group this one separate, this one separate from this one. All right, I'm hitting the letter G on the keyboard for group, the letter U for ungroup, but your group tools and ungroup tools are over here under edit objects, the fourth and fifth icon. Uh, it's just easier sometimes for shortcuts and all. Um, I am going to, now that they're grouped uh, and all, I'm going to make sure they're aligned up and down with one another, which they are. Uh, and I'm going to make sure they're centered on the material, which they are. And I'm going to I'm going to bump this one in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Bump this one in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm going to select those and I'm going to scale them up ever so slightly. I'm going to hold the shift key and Okay, one more time. Let's move this one in. Doesn't matter where I move it, uh, as long as I center them both after they're done. Let's move this one in. All right, if I select both of them and use my alignment tool, left to right on the material, make sure they're centered. It's gonna be good. And uh, what I'd like to do is, I would like to create a kind of a border around here that almost takes on the shape of these flowers, kind of and all. 
So on these florals, I'm going to ungroup them and I'm going to use just the outside border uh, for each of them, the outside boundary. And I'm going to offset them a good amount. I'm going to offset those outside boundaries a good amount. So I'm going to go, uh, let me see what, um, no sharp corners, offset three quarters. Let's go uh, da, 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 three eighths, 375.375. Yeah, three eighths. All right. Uh, and then I am going to take, uh, let's ungroup this guy again and ungroup this guy, uh, this vector and this vector. Let's take the outside and offset that outward. Uh, this one I'm going to do just an eighth of an inch. That's kind of my, I like that number, 0.125 for the uh, side designs. Same thing, select that outside profile, offset it outward an eighth of an inch. Wonderful. And then I'm going to take a rectangle. And I'm going to center it on the material. Get it centered. And I am going to select the rectangle and the two boundaries here. No, I can't weld because it'll get rid of those two boundaries on the inside. I got to trim away on this one. Because uh, I drew my rectangle too big. Let me, let me, let, so I can weld. Let me hold the shift key down and bring this in like that. So it's just inside. Oh, I don't want to do that. Okay, no welding on this one. I'm going to do scissor trimming. So let me pull this back out where it was. All right, let's trim. So here, I'm going to trim out here away. Get rid of that, that. I'm getting rid of this whole offset all the way around. Okay, except for here. This gets cut away in the middle. Get rid of this line. So the boundary is gonna kinda form. Just getting rid of the straight line Okay, same thing down here at the bottom. I'm gonna trim away all the way around here. Getting rid of that straight line, connecting it there. Connecting it there. Okay, cool. All right, now here I'm gonna get rid of the inside trim here and here trim the inside here and here and then I'm going to select this and hit delete select this and hit delete Okay. Okie dokie, tokie dokie. All right. Uh, first off, this whole thing is uh, going to be pocketed down to create my frame. So first and foremost, the for the tool pathing for this, the just that inside boundary is going to be selected, and it's going to be a pocket cut. Um, Actually, it's going to be a V-carve because I want a nice little V-carve uh, edge, a nice little angle. So it's going to be a V-carve cut with a flat depth that kind of combines the pocket with it. Um, and uh, we're going to mill it down. I'm going to have it actually standing up about 3 sixteenths of an inch, 0.1875.
and use my 60 degree V bit for this. Now remember, this whole thing is going to get pocketed. Not, you know, none of this design here is, matters just yet. So I'm just creating this kind of uh, lip, this frame around the outer edge. So I don't need the 16th inch end mill for this. I don't need the 8th inch end mill for this. Um, I'm just going to use the quarter and the half. And I'm going to calculate that. And what that's going to do is that's going to bring this pocket down just slightly. Uh, 3 sixteenths of an inch. Uh, let's turn off the draw tool so it speeds up a little bit. And while that's cutting, let me see here. Um, did you save your last job? I did. Uh, you have to have the new upgrade to do all of that you are showing us tonight. No, Darwin Bradley. So everything except for the sheets, right? Everything except for creating those sheets, those different sheets in the same project, you can do in whatever version you have. Desktop, Pro, Aspire, version 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, whatever. Or not 11, 12, we ain't gotten there for yet. But, you know, all the way back. You would just be creating this sign as one project, creating the other type as another project, creating the other type as another project, right? Three separate projects. I happen to have version 11, so I can create all three different sheets in one project. So that's what I'm doing. But you can do the same thing. You would just have three separate projects, you know, three different size boards, three separate projects and all, uh, you know, one for each unique design that you do. Version 11, just the sheets, is that's the only benefit that I'm using here. Uh, but as far as the calculation boxes, that W divided by 2 kind of thing that I was doing earlier, all that can be done in Vetric, even in the earlier versions. Okay? Cool. So, all right. So we've got this uh, little pocket here. Uh, now, um, just... The profile cut's gonna be the last, the very last thing, but I am gonna do the profile cut now just for visual purposes. So the final cutout, I'm gonna do a profile toolpath cutting through the material. Uh, it's gonna use a quarter inch end mill, cutting on the outside of the line. I'm not gonna add tabs for this either. Uh, again, for visual purposes, preview the visible toolpath. Uh, this way I can Delete these so you can kind of see the sign here, right? Uh, that profile cut is going to, I'm going to keep moving it down the list because it's going to be the last item. So this will be kind of the, the shape of the sign here. All right, now on here, uh, we're going to sit very similar, again, kind of keeping things consistent and stuff, very similar to the... Um, first project these flourishes here this flourish here make sure you don't accidentally select something that doesn't belong okay I'm gonna group that flourish I'm gonna hit G to group it together so I don't accidentally do this and let's do the wings too let's group that together let's group that together that way when I grab this one I don't have to worry about it selecting anything you know else group all right so on these two flourishes here um, we're going to uh, do a V carve toolpath I'm gonna do this this one sign two different ways so because uh, I want the I, I'm gonna do a second sign with the, where they're raised up all right, so same same design, but I'm going to do it two different versions. So on this one, this first one is going to be a V-carve toolpath. It's going to have no flat depth. <clears throat> it should be fine. If I get a warning about cutting through, then I'll put a flat depth in. But no clearance tools. <clears throat> Calculate. All right, cool. Preview the visible toolpath. Oh. <laughs> I need to start down at my uh, 3 16 
because that pocket's already been cut out. 1875 is my start depth. Calculate. There we go. Let's try that again. Okay. Uh, let's add <clears throat> some color to that. One. Yeah. I think those are going to look better raised up. Uh, let's reset that preview and preview all the tool paths again. I think that's going to look better raised up. That's why I'm going to do it two ways. Hurry along, hurry along. We got things to do. And this will be the last project for the evening, guys. Hopefully, you picked up some things in here, just to give you some, just just to give you some visual, you know, um, something, you know, something just that, that you know you can make really nice looking signs, very simply and basic, uh, but uh, that just have some wow to them, you know, that people would just really enjoy, uh, and all. <clears throat> all right, so let's go in here. And uh, I want to put something in the middle here. So um, now, imagine if you will, this could be a little bit smaller or whatever, but um, uh, the reason for the angel wings and stuff um, is, you know, the angel wings could symbolize a lot of different things. Uh, and um, the, uh, for me, um, it could be, uh, you know, uh, a sentimental sign or something, you know, someone that you might have lost or someone you want to remember or something. Uh, it could be, uh, angel, angelic, you know, a child's name, you know, that, uh, you know, you're making for their room or whatever the case may be. Um, for me... I'll put in my sister's name. And uh, all capital letters, S-T-A-C-I. Lost my sister when she was 16. I was 10 years old. Uh, my sister and two cousins to a drunk driver. Killed all three of them yesterday. They were all three 16. And uh, so this would be, the angel wings would kind of represent that. So let's go with a nice looking font. Yeah, I'm going to actually go on to online. We're going to go to uh, wordmark.it. Uh, this is a great site for you beginners. Uh, wordmark, M-A-R-K dot I-T. It helps you choose fonts that are on your computer. And so um, let's type in this, and uh, this is uh, going to show me all of my fonts. Uh, they're on my currently on my computer, and let me see which one really just stands out to me. hard when all the words are capital all the letters are capital letters you don't get a really in you know if it was capital and lowercase and all uh, you know some some fonts are just not meant to be all capitals capitalized I want something that looks that has a little bit of flow to it but doesn't look too, I don't know, gaudy. I am actually gonna go with the Lucida handwriting. It's got a little bit of a flow to it, a little bit of flow to it. Lucidia, Lucida, 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 Lucida. 
Yeah. I think. Now the divine swash that doesn't look good. All right, Lucida. That's what we're gonna go with. Uh, so let's go into our fonts. Go to the L's. Pass the L's. I'm gonna go bold and let's go ahead and uh, size this up. Let's center it onto the material. Nice, okay. And very similar to what we did with the last one. Gonna select that inside area. We're gonna go with the V-carved toolpath, uh, eighth of an inch, starting at three sixteenths, uh, and um, cutting a flat depth another eighth of an inch down. Uh, for this one, I'm just going to, it's not a very big sign, I'm gonna use just my eighth inch end mill for this one. Calculate. All right, so I've got some vectors overlapping. One more time, vector validator, search selected, and just one, right? One little thing, this little cross right here. So uh, I can't do anything with that uh, unless I convert the text to a curve, so it'll, it'll no longer be a font. And I forgot to put those others on my original layers. <laughs> I'm still working in the flourishes layer. Uh, I'll organize all the layers in just a minute, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and convert that so that way I can come in here um, with my scissors and just trim that away. Okay, so just that one little thing is what I got uh, beeped on as far as a warning. Let's calculate that out. Okay, let's preview that visible toolpath. Okay, let's give that toolpath some color. Uh, what would be a good color? I don't know what a good color would be, but let's pick this one for now. Now, wait a minute, something's missing. Ah, something was missing. I didn't have the border selected. Let's try that one more time. That was not supposed to look like that. All right, let's reset that preview and preview all the tool paths. And I'm gonna make uh, just that one little change. I'm gonna make another little change. Um, and I want this it kind of, I want this to have levels to it. I want this to have levels to it. Uh, and so we're gonna do this two ways. What you're gonna see right now is way one. And then I'm gonna go back and recalculate one tool path and change it up. Those flourishes, I think those flourishes should be raised. Yeah. Yeah, for sure, the flourishes need to be raised. All right, let's get rid of this. All right, uh, the pocket cut. Let me see here, that pocket cut. Let me see what happens if I add some. I don't even know what color to add. All right, so basically we have this. But I want levels to this. I want like three different levels. So this, I want these flourishes raised. So we're gonna make one simple change to this toolpath on this pocket cut, I am going to add in these two items to that toolpath. That's it. So we're gonna calculate that toolpath. As a matter of fact, let me stop that. Um, let me open that back up for editing. I want, I, I wanna get rid of these things. These little things right here are just trash to me. They're not gonna do me any good being in there. 
So let me ungroup this and I want to delete this and that. Same thing here. Let me ungroup that and delete this and that. I don't know if those were the original or when I did the offset if those got created. But one more time, I want this object selected, this object selected, and the outside border here. And I want to calculate this toolpath again. This is going to give me that pocket kind of that it'll give me that frame it'll make my border have that frame look around it and then the flourishes will be raised up um, in that pocket just to give it a little bit of height now if I didn't want the flourishes here to be too much higher than what's going to be carved in the middle I could actually create a, an additional pocket to bring them down just a little bit um, but I think we're gonna be good there. Now, the only difference is with this is this middle toolpath here, profile goes at the bottom. This uh, V-carved toolpath here is not gonna get used. Um, just this. So if I preview this now, go to the 3D view, and we preview that visible toolpath. This will give it some levels to it. Okay, let's turn this off, or wait till it finishes. Uh, let's click this off, click this off, and come in here. And so if we look, we have some levels. So this is raised, and then we have this pocket area here. Then it comes down into this pocket area with this raised and it just gives it just some levels, right? Some character. It's not just a plain, simple, flat V carve. It just kind of gives it some something, right? That's what we're trying to give is just something. The outside border gives it a little bit of a nice style for the sign and um, you know, it just gives it something, right? We want to take it a step further. We could add a little texture in here, or we got a little texture just out here, right? Where we have a smooth area. We could do, do different types of textures and things like that. But you get the idea, right? Uh, just something uh, different. Fun, simple, basic, doesn't take a whole lot to, to create, um, but when it's carved, it's like someone that gets that or buys that if you're selling them the kind of thing, or, or uh, if it's something like, you know, for a kid's bedroom or something to remember somebody by, whatever it may be, it just gives it that like, wow, this is cool, right? You know, a little character. I'm gonna give it a little character. All right, let's see here. Let's see if uh, we got, um, uh, let's save our changes so I don't forget to do that and let's go through these questions um, so when you save the sheets do they all get saved in one folder or does Vetrix save them as individual files well if you notice here in the tool pass let's kind of uh, come over here in the tool pass you see uh, sheet one two and three right so all the tool pass for sheet one are here all the tool paths for sheet two are here and all the tool paths for sheet three are here. So you're gonna be saving that project separately, right? Sheet one files get saved, sheet two files get saved, sheet three files get saved. Um, so uh, they're separated uh, by those sheets. And if you wanna view them all at one time, you can preview all sheets and it'll just list all the tool paths together, right? But it'll hide you see how these are grayed out here? Because it's only gonna show you the sheet that's active, the toolpaths that are active, right? If I come over to my sheets list over here and I make sheet two active, 
in the tool pass, you'll see that uh, sheet three grays out and sheet two are active, right? So you can only save those tool paths and stuff and all. Um, uh, Brooks, you're welcome. Uh, thanks for repeating all those shortcuts uh, so they get embedded in my mind. Yeah, we used uh, G for group when we had multiple vectors selected. We wanted to group them together as one item. We had U for ungroup. Um, we uh, used the number nine key to rotate something clock or counterclockwise in 45 degree increments. The number zero key to rotate clockwise uh, in 45 degree increments as far as keyboard shortcuts that we were playing around with. Um, we uh, the calculation boxes remember the letter W or the letter X your X axis represents your materials width the letter uh, H or the letter Y your Y axis or the height of the project represents the height of that project the letter Z or the letter T thickness or Z for you know your Z height uh, the software once your job set up the software knows those dimensions and so you can use those variables in your boxes and everything um, if you choose right so uh, cool stuff um, the if you don't remember where those uh, variables are you can go to the help menu help contents uh, in the manual over on the left hand side under the menu of interface you can go down to the calculation edit boxes menu and it will show you those variables you can even use a comma for feet p for pi and things like that so it shows you those uh, characters that you can use when you're doing calculations and things right so it's under the interface under calculation edit boxes in the manual that help help contents right cool beans all right ladies and gentlemen um, let's see here uh, thanks kool-aid uh, what bit would you use here uh, so Arvin I am using uh, for the sign number three let's go back to sheet number three here for a minute and uh, preview uh, all those Oh, not all of them. Hold on, let me stop that. Stop. Uh, preview all except for that one right there. Preview the visible tool pass. Um, for this, I'm using a 60 degree quarter inch V bit. Could be a 90, could be you know whatever you want, but a 60 looks really good here. Uh, I am using a eighth inch end mill around those uh, angel wings and the text on that lower level. I'm using a quarter inch end mill on the upper uh, around the flourishes and stuff, I believe. Let me look. Uh, I think I'm using a quarter and an eighth. Uh, let me double check on that here. We are using a, I'm sorry, a half inch and a quarter inch end mill uh, to clear out that main kind of pocket area and stuff. Uh, I'm also using a 60 degree V bit as well, same 60 degree V bit. Um, and then I'm using an eighth inch and a 60 degree V bit for the lower stuff uh, on those levels and everything. Uh, and uh, then I'm using a quarter inch bit to uh, end mill to uh, cut out the profile and the shape, right? So let's, uh, let's see, if, see if cherry looks good with this. Uh, let's go cherry. Just a little something. Um, and let's turn off light follows user for a minute. There you go. So you can kind of see that level there. Right? So um, that's the bits that I'd be using, Arvin. Uh, do you use mostly three quarter inch uh, wood for the work or half inch? I use, uh, I mean, your staple or my staple for signs is three quarter inch material. Unless I'm doing a 3D model or something that really needs to be kind of robust, then I'm using inch and a half or two inch thick material, uh, milling it down, you know, if it's, uh, you know, uh, going to be something thick. Uh, very rarely do I use half inch material for signs. 
unless it's just a little fun little sign uh, um, that uh, a little crafty little sign or something you know little name plate or whatever little quote live laugh love kind of thing then I'll use probably maybe three eighths or half inch wood but for my larger signs three quarter of an inch Darwin three quarters of an inch uh, Troy okay cool I don't have version 11 yet but it would be cool if uh, you would put them all in a file folder like making uh, pieces of furniture so they're all together yeah and so basically uh, you know when I go to save these tool paths right um, uh, let's get my post processor here when I go to save these tool paths I'm going to create a job folder okay and uh, in this case uh, it would be um, the uh, Stacy sign and um, in that job folder is where I'm going to save the tool paths right uh, so for this one uh, all of my quarter inch uh, bits can uh, let's see here I got a half inch first that's my half inch end mill is going to be first here we go <coughs> actually I'm just gonna they're all yeah I'm gonna just do visible tool pass uh, to multiple files and group where possible uh, I am going to uh, check off all of these except for that V carve 3 because I like version 2 better than the version 1 of this and uh, when I save them I'm gonna go into that folder uh, I'm gonna call this uh, just give it a name Stacy sign I'm gonna put it under I'm, I'm not gonna put an underscore uh, just Stacy sign I'm gonna hit save right now if we go back and look at the files uh, what it's created is uh, Stacy sign uh, sheet number three it tells me what sheet it is because I have multiple sheets but uh, in the order that they carve one my half inch end mill two my uh, quarter inch end mill three my V bit uh, four three and four um, is uh, the clearing uh, this is my eighth inch end mill uh, three and five V bit my 60 degree V bit and my quarter inch end mill right uh, so one, two, three, four, five, six in that order. Okay, uh, and um, yeah, that's it. So uh, it uh, I just give it a name and it tells me what sheet it is and it uh, puts them in order in the order that they'll run. Okay, uh, now the order is based on the order here, so make sure you got the order right. You do not want the profile at the top of the list, you know, where it's cutting it out first, right? That's a no-no. Make sure your tool paths are in the proper order, and you'll be good. But, yeah, it's pretty cool, Troy. Uh, let's see here. Um, wow, thanks. A lot of different bits. Um, yeah, Arvind. Uh, I believe, Arvind, uh, you own a digital wood carver, if I'm not mistaken. When you're running your first tool path, let's say in my instance, this half inch end mill, right? I zero out my X and Y, touch off the Z, uh, whether I'm, in this case, I'm starting in the center of the job or the bottom left corner of my job. So I'm on the bottom left corner, touch off my Z on the top of the material and uh, I'm running that first file. Uh, when it's finished, it's gonna return back to the home position and it's gonna shut off the router. At that point in time, I take that bit out. I can move the router anywhere I need to to change bits. I'm going to take that bit out, put in my quarter inch bit, touch off the Z, do not change X and Y, load file number two, run it. When it's finished and it comes back home and shuts off, raise the router up, take that bit out, put the V bit in, move over to somewhere that hasn't been carved, touch off on the top of the material and set the Z for that third bit, load that third file and run it. So after each job, the machine will return back home with your digital wood carver. The machine will return back to the XY home position and it'll shut off the router. At that point, you can move the router anywhere you need to. Uh, raise your router up, change your bit, set the Z axis, you know, on the top of the material, on the material that has not been carved, your surface, your original material surface. Load your next file, hit start, because it knows where home is. You don't reset X and Y on your tool changes, just your Z. Okay, so uh, if you, I believe you have a Armin, Arvind, if, I think so, uh, but uh, that's how you would do it. All right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, 
yeah ventricle label the sheets uh, uh troy you just put them in the folder and all thank you very much uh guys and girls i really appreciate um uh, each of you for hanging out with me tonight and uh in this two hour 10 minute uh class hopefully you got uh you know uh just i don't know just a different look a little simple basics uh, how you can use flourishes to you know kind of dress some things up and stuff and uh yeah have some fun with it all right everybody until next time thanks for everything uh i will uh, see you soon but before I go let me answer one last question so when you use the group when you use the group when you needed box that's when the same bits are used right hold on a minute oh yeah group together uh, Kool-Aid uh, when the bot where it says group where possible group where possible on that particular option there um, the if it has the same if they're in the order and they use the same bit it's going to group them into one file that's what that means all right everybody until next time have a great night we'll see you soon